Hey everyone and welcome to Comic Breakdown. If you're new to the page, be sure to give us a like and a sub so you don't miss any of the content we have coming out. And today we're going to be diving into Fantastic Four Empire Fallout. Now this is following the events of Empire. If you guys have not kept up with the storyline, I have every single issue covered. Be sure to check out the playlist in the description or at the top of this video. Now, Empire left us with the Kree Scroll being able to win against the Katati forces and Earth's heroes being able to save Earth. And so this issue is going to pick us up on the blue side of the moon, or the blue area of the moon. And without further ado, let's dive into this issue. So picking up with this issue we see someone really unique. We see the Unseen. Now, the Unseen is an individual that pops up only when something significant is going to happen. And this is such an important moment in the Marvel Universe history because this is the end of the Kree Scroll War, like for good. The Civil War that has lasted as long as the universe is, is finally over. Now, the thing about the Unseen is he has stolen sight. So his sight is derived from YouTube. And he's not really allowed to do anything. He, he's just allowed to observe. And he observes, you know, all the forces gathering here on this moon. And we get, you know, some great reunions here. We, we see all the Fantastic Four, you know, coming together, reuniting. You know, Spider-Man super excited to be here. You know, he's on the freaking moon. You know, while this is, you know, really casual for everybody else, for him, it's just like, holy crap, I'm on the moon, guys. And our, our Korean scroll kids that the Fantastic Four adopted, essentially adopted, you know, they're, they're super excited as well. This is, this is sacred ground for them. Like, they, they know so much of the history here. You know, this is where the, the Kree Scroll War began. And then they get stopped dead in their tracks. Because then they see Emperor Hulking. And they immediately just bow down to him. And, and Emperor Hulking is such a great leader. Because he's just like, listen, like, if it weren't for you two, this whole war would have been lost. We would have lost to the Katadi. They would have overwhelmed our forces. But you two were able to come together and help our people in a way that I never would be able to. And we really get a, a unique thing here. It's like Koi is being drug away, and it's like a, a Scooby-Doo villain where you're just like, oh, the, I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for those pesky kids. And I really find that pretty comical. And as all this is going on, Wolverine, Thor, and the Thing see the Unseen. And, and Thor lets him know, like, this isn't somebody we have to worry about. This isn't a threat. He's just here to observe. And then we have a little scene here with Captain America and Iron Man talking to Koi. And they're trying to figure out how they forge their weapons. Because these weapons are so far superior to anything that anybody has. And so no one really understands, you know, how these were created. And of course, Koi is not willing to, to try to have them understand or anything of that nature. He's just like, oh, you can go eat it. Like, I'm not going to tell you anything. And this is where Reed Richards calls somebody in. Somebody that not everybody is going to be happy about. He calls in the Profiteer, one of the elders of the universe. So, Because if somebody's going to know, it's going to be the Profiteer. Like, she is an arms dealer for both the Kree and the Scroll. Like, she's literally the person to talk to on weapons being manufactured and who's creating them. And obviously, this offsets everybody, and everybody's ready to fight. But Reed Richards, you know, he calms everybody down. He's like, listen, we need her expertise, and if anybody's going to know who this, who made these, it's going to be her. And so she willingly takes this and says that she's going to name her price after she's figured out what they are. And Thor decides that he, he's ready to take all the Katati and Koi and put them where they belong. And Emperor Hulking agrees with this, and so they're unchained, and we see them teleported to their new home world. And we see Thor use a really unique thing here. You know, he ventured far and wide to obtain some really unique abilities, a secret birthright from his mother, to be able to make uh, the green grow. And so it's, with this ability, he's able to essentially create a whole world of just very lush vegetation. Now, this is a story that was supposed to happen with Inside Empire. We were supposed to be getting a, a Thor Empire run, but I think it was scrapped because I haven't seen anything on it since the beginning of Empire starting, which is really unfortunate. I really would really like to see how Thor really got these abilities. 
And so Koi realizes that he doesn't recognize any of the star constellations, you know, so he's left them on this world with no maps, no ships, no way to get back to the regular world. Like, these guys are on the brink of existence and have no clue where they are. So if they are ever going to get off this planet, it's going to take them quite a long time to be able to do so. And Franklin, our Fantastic Four kid, you know, he, he doesn't understand why Thor did that. Like, he has... A, a godlike nature power like why why would you just give it up and thor lets him know like power doesn't make one godlike you know he he says he would sacrifice all of his might a thousand times over if it were spent in the service of a worthy cause because it's not their abilities that make them gods it's how they use their abilities how they use their power and then we'll cut over to Franklin and Peter Parker really just being able to finally like reconnect like they haven't had a chance to sit down and talk to each other and they you know they just sit down and have a really great conversation friend to friend and it's really heartwarming and you know it, it's really just nice to see these two be able to you know reconnect like this after after such a a long and, and drawn out conflict that was going on and so everyone gathers up because the profiteer has news and the news that she tells everybody is that she literally has no idea how these weapons were made or who made them. And she lets them know, like, this this power source, this weapon, it isn't something new. In fact, it's extremely ancient. It predates her and her brothers and sisters, and they're the elders of the universe. So if it predates them, we can only imagine where these things came from. And the profiteer decides to name her price. And the price is the crystalline batteries to help power these weapons, as well as the children, which was something that was never on the table. And, and everybody's just like, yeah, that's not happening. We're not going to do that. And the profiteer just, you know, she goes on this the whole thing about how, you know, it, she has a signed contract from the Kree and the scroll and that they have to adhere to it and blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, Reed Richards says Avengers assemble, and they're ready to just crack skulls. Like, you really think you're going to come in here and take these kids? You're highly mistaken. And this is where Emperor Hulking steps in, and he grabs his contract, and he's like, you know what? Like, you're right. This is, this is undeniable. This is definitely signed by both the Kree and the Scroll Empires. It's completely legal. But the thing about that is, there's no more Kree and Scroll Empires. There is only the Alliance. And I am the Emperor of that Alliance. And so I'm pretty sure that we just won't be buying weapons from you anymore. That way you have no leverage. And she really just hightails it out of there. She's like, oh man, <laughs> I just lost all of my business. And I didn't get what I wanted. And it's obviously not a fight she can she can win. But we, we have to assume that she's going to return at some point in the future to, to enact some kind of revenge. And so the, the Kree and the Scroll Child are finally free. You know, this is the final moment. It's happened. Like, this is a literal galactic universal moment that will be echoed through the history books for eternity. And with this happening, Emperor Hulking, with a royal decree, asks the thing and his wife if Alicia, if they will adopt these two children, because he can't think of anybody better to put them with. And the kids absolutely adore this, you know. Uh, they, they're they immediately just jumping into their arms like, all right, I'm totally down for this, let's do it. And so this seemingly wraps things up. You know, everybody says their goodbyes, they say see you later, have a good one. And after everyone's left, the Unseen is left standing there, standing over the Katati weapons. And, you know, wanting that thirst for knowledge, he tells the weaponry, you know, show me who made you. And he finds out that the Profiteer wasn't lying. This technology is ancient. It, pre it predates the Elders of the Universe. It predates the Asgardians. It predates the Celestials. It's literally from the first race. Something the eye hasn't seen. And then Uatu breaks out of his eye and says that there shall be a reckoning. And that will be the end of this issue. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think about his return. How do you guys feel about the uh, the unseen? What do you guys think? How, the, how is this going to play out? You know, where is Empire going from here? You know, I, I was actually really disappointed about not being able to get that Thor Empire story. So it leaves a little bit of gaps and things of that nature that 
that we missed out on. But outside of that, you know, I, I have to say that this is a, a good wrap-up to the Empire story. You know, it, it closes a few loops and stuff like that, and there's still Aftermath that we're going to be covering a little bit later. They, that goes in a little bit more detail uh, and closes the story out even further for us. But yeah, all in all, I thought it was a really great issue. I'm excited to see where they're going to be taking everything moving forward and how this story is going to progress. So if you guys haven't yet, be sure to like and subscribe to the page, and until the next video.